When I made that change, that difference, new points began to open up for me. I was able to connect with the system instead of hating on it, instead of judging it. And I was able to connect with this new point of actually selling my art and making a living as an artist. All right, hi everybody, this is Andrew Gable. And I think this is gonna be a really cool video. This, kind, this point kind of hit me today. I was working on some other things and it kind of came up as like, holy crap, like I could share that point with people that was transformational for me, that really switched everything for me in terms of why before I never made any money as an artist to where I eventually got to a point where I was selling consistently with the gallery. So what was the difference between here and here? And I'm gonna share that point with you today. And I'm really excited actually to share this because this is a really cool point and it was very transformational. And I'm gonna talk about how it was and how this might actually help you. I was an artist since I was 10 years old uh, I grew up in a creative family. I always wanted to be an artist. You know, I went to art school. I always wanted to be like the best artist I could be. I wanted to be successful, but I never sold any work. There was like this line that, it, that I kind of crossed over. Up until I was like 27, 28, I made so much art and I sold very little. Now I'm not gonna say I never sold any art. I sold some art, um, but not even close to be anything to be to make a living from or to be consistent, to have a consistent income. I actually eventually completely ran out of money, totally broke, couldn't afford even my studio. Like, it was just like, I went through a depression. I was like, holy shit, like what I had this huge vision for myself to be this amazing, great artist, and I just couldn't sell anything. You know, I had a gallery that I, I had work in, but or no one was really buying my art, but I wanna focus on this transformational point um, for me that really enabled me to start selling art. Okay. <laughs> so I wanna say one key aspect of this transformational point was sales. Embracing sales, embracing the idea of selling your art for money. I originally was under this impression that I didn't have to sell my art, that if it was good enough, it would sell itself, that I don't want to have anything to do with art or selling my art. You know, salesmen were slimy, sales was slimy, sales was bad, money was the root of all evil, money and creativity don't go together, and I had all these ideas and belief systems. Like I mentioned, I ended up kind of crashing and burning and never selling anything, and I, and I, I kind of let go of the idea that I was gonna be able to make money with art. During this time, I met an individual who was, I looked up to, and I would consider a mentor, and he was very successful in life and in business. It was kind of the first time in my life that somebody had brought up this point of sales to me, and you have to learn how to sell. Maybe you should embrace sales, embrace business. It was, it was such a foreign concept to me. I mean, you know, growing up, my family was not really the business sales type. We were more the creative type. It was great because I could develop my creativity without thinking about money. So it was a very, very much a self-expression that I was developing, which I'm so grateful for. But then I ended up at a point where I didn't know how to sell it. I didn't know how to make a living from it. In many ways, I had actually rejected the system. Like, part of my reason for becoming an artist was because I don't wanna participate with this system, I don't like it. Like, people work nine to five in jobs they hate, this system is so corrupt, like, that's bullshit. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be an artist instead. And I had, I had cut myself off from the system. The, one of the main transformations that I made when I met this individual who was encouraging me to embrace sales, but not only to embrace sales, but to embrace the system from the perspective of, if you don't participate with what's here, you will never be able to change what's here. And not only that, but deeper was this dimension of the world is in fact just a reflection of us. And so if I'm standing here and I'm saying, this is so dumb, the system is corrupt, 
it's bad, it's the problem. Like I'm essentially in judgment of myself because the system, this world that we're creating here is just a reflection of who we are. And so these principles that I was introduced to um, had an effect on me and I began to change how I viewed things and realized, oh my God, I should be embracing the system, embracing what we have that's right here at our fingertips instead of fighting it. If I wanna change it, I can participate with it and change it that way through engaging with it. And it was kind of like a total 360. Part of that embracing also meant embracing money, embracing the reality of the system, embracing the reality that people are essentially in jobs that they don't wanna be in or are forced to work for money for their lives. So I, I really had to stand back and look at the practical reality of the system. And, you know, I learned firsthand what it means to completely deny what was here. It meant that I would run out of money because I would insist that I don't have to work and I don't have to get a job and, and I would end up with no money. I would insist that I don't have to worry about selling my art. And guess what? I never sold any art. So I started to learn um, sales from this individual and I started researching sales and reading sales books and really liking it. Like I found, I'm like, wow, this is actually really fun. This is cool. I did something I, I never thought I would do. I let go of the idea of being an artist. I thought, you know what? Let me see if I can do something else with my life. And I basically let it go completely with the idea that I was never going to be an artist and allowed myself to exist within that reality, allowing myself to come to peace with the fact or idea that maybe this wouldn't work and embrace other parts of myself, expand myself. Because just being an artist, for me, I, I had limited myself and what I would open myself to. So this period was a process of me opening myself up to other possibilities. It was a really interesting time to just let it go and start learning sales and start embracing the reality of the system and, and learning what it meant for me to be responsible for myself and, and find a job in the system. That was like a huge step for me to be like, okay, let me go and just find a regular nine to five job and let me do that. And that's what I did. You know, I continued to do art on the side, like as a hobby, you know, not really thinking I was gonna sell it but just a self-expression, asking myself, what do I wanna do? What, what's something that I can do? And not only what can I do, but I was changing the way I did it. How can I support other people through my art? What ended up happening was I was starting out in this sales job and I, you know, I was even going door to door, which was like total fear, like, but I was enjoying the process of learning how to sell and how to communicate and interact with people. So I needed to supplement my income at that time and I ended up finding uh, an ad for um, an opening for a stone carver. I decided, you know what, I, I, I know I can do that. I mean, I think I can. I've spent my entire life doing art. So I went and ended up forming a relationship with this gallery and I began making stone carvings for this gallery. The theme of the artwork in the location that I was was wild, mostly wildlife art. And I was very much indoctrinated in art school to see wildlife art as inferior and not important and how there were, were these very narrow views of what a successful artist should look like or be. And so I, during this, this time where I was learning to embrace sales, embrace the system instead of reject the system, which is what I was doing before. I also opened myself up to the possibility of doing other kinds of art, realizing that my idea of what I thought art was supposed to be when I was rejecting the system, rejecting money, was very limited. And so I said, you know what? Maybe I wouldn't have chosen necessarily to do wildlife art, but here it is knocking at my door. So let me open my door. Let me embrace it and let me see what potentials exist within this expression. Let me see if I can put myself into it. Let me see how I can do this. Let me just test it for myself instead of judging it right away and saying, no, that's not the kind of art I want to do. And so 
I opened the door for this opportunity. As I was doing this, I formed this relationship with this gallery and my whole mentality was completely different. I was interested in sales. I was interested in learning how to sell this art. I was interested in connecting with the customer. I was interested in working with the gallery and learning about how they sell the art and what are what is, what is this point? This is the important point. How, how does the money move? How do people come in and buy work? Like my total viewpoint had changed because I had made this shift of embracing sales, embracing money, stop fighting the system, stop fighting how things are, embrace it, work with it, and within that learn to change it or find ways to change it, you know, improve it. And as a result, I was able to form this relationship with this completely new point instead of just like shutting it down. And then I started selling art, art started to sell. And then I had these new experiences around selling my art and, and learning how to do that and how to connect with the system and how to connect with people on that level. Discovering the relationship between commerce and art. For the last seven years, I've been selling my sculptures and that's how I have made a living as an artist. Now, obviously there's room for improvement. I'm not gonna lie, but to get that opportunity or to be able to step into this point, this world, this new reality for me where I was actually selling my art and surviving off my art, making a living off my art was just like a 360 completely. And when I look back at why and how that possibility opened up, I do see this distinct transformation, this point of awareness that came through in my life where I let go of these limiting ideas of how I believed an artist is supposed to make a living. That also has helped me move and shift online, share on Instagram, share on YouTube. And that was even a process too, where I, I would somewhat react to artists on YouTube and be like, that isn't real art. And now realizing, dang, there's some super creative, like incredible art and artists on YouTube. Like that is real art. I mean, it's like, just a slap in the face, really. So that would be what I would say to artists out there, especially artists like struggling, is like, you gotta let go of that. I mean, especially struggling with that point that I did. Being an artist doesn't mean rejecting the system. Being an activist doesn't mean rejecting the system. You know, being a rebel doesn't mean rejecting the system. If you want to, if you want to contribute, you know, if you want to participate, if you want to make a real difference, that's what I realized. It's like, you have to participate with what's here. Don't judge it because it's you. This world is you. The system that we've created is just a reflection of ourselves. We've created this world. And so my point is don't judge it. Yeah, work with what's here. And then from within participating with it, maybe there'll be openings where you can create change within it, but you have to participate. And that's what I'm realizing. And so my goal, I had this, point, this new point for myself. And it was specific for me, an artist, a person who always rejected the system. I don't like government. I don't like taxes. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I don't like paperwork to actually embrace it. And my goal was to fully integrate with the system, to fully integrate with it, participate with it, be effective. I needed to learn how to be effective in this world in a practical way. And that meant paying my bills on time. Like that to me was a huge thing, like that simple point, because I'd never done it. When I made that change, that difference, new points began to open up for me. I was able to connect with the system instead of hating on it, instead of judging it. And I was able to connect with this new point of actually selling my art and making a living as an artist. <laughs> Blows my mind. Like, so that, I wanted to share that because I thought that was really cool. I was thinking about that today, I'm like, there was, a, there was a distinct change, a difference that I made where I started embracing this world more. So don't fight it. Don't fight the world even though you might not like it. I'm not saying just accept it how it is and that's always gonna be like that. If I really wanna have an impact and have a voice, I gotta use what's here. I gotta use the tools. I gotta use the language that we're all communicating in. So the language is money, that language is economics. So I need to participate and become and learn how to be effective within this model, within this system, so that I can have a voice as an artist, which is something I always wanted. And then from there, I can share my views, perspective, um, and maybe find ways to change it from within.
All right, everybody. I hope that inspires you to embrace the world instead of fighting it and, 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 and realizing that that actually can be a good thing for a creative person, not a bad thing. Um, thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video.